I've been asked in a couple of my other videos to talk about the models and the props that I'm using to fly my models. So what I thought I'd do is put together a quick video to capture my experiences with this. It's been a bit trial and error for me. My first quad that I was um, I ever flew that was any size was actually built for me, so somebody else had figured this out. And I've now built two of the quads, one of a similar size, and my big H-copter. And the H-copter I had to have two goes at trying to figure out the size of motors and props and other bits and pieces. So I thought I'd put together this video to share that with other people so that they can benefit from that experience. This is all anecdotal, uh, there's no warranties or, or kind of guarantees with this information but it, it has um, proven to work for me and I'll talk about a website that you can go to to get much more information. So we'll start with the multi-rotor. Very basic but the one thing that we have to do here is we have to overcome gravity. So if this model that we're looking at here, apologies for the graphics, weighs a certain amount, the amount of thrust that the motors and the rotors generate has to be more to make it rise into the air. Pretty basic stuff. So if we're looking at this model and it's weighing a thousand grams, then we just need more than a thousand grams, right, to get it in the air. Well, if we want it to hover, then actually we probably want it to have twice the amount of thrust as the weight of the model so it can hover about 50% and each of those four motors will have to deliver an element of that thrust. So that's the theory. In practice, how much thrust do you actually need? Well what I found is for a kilogram's worth of model you actually need a little bit more than two times that to make sure that you've got enough headroom. The reason for that is that the motor output and the thrust available isn't linear and changes through the throttle range and that's due to a couple of things, efficiencies of the motor itself and also the, the, the dynamics of the rotor. You don't get the same thrust as it uh, gets faster and faster, it gets less and less efficient. So if you build in 20% it gives you a little bit of headroom. So in this example for a one kilogram model we, we're going to try and put 2.4 kilograms worth of thrust. So we need 2.4 kilograms worth of thrust so what we'll do is we'll divide that by the number of motors that we have so there's four motors so we need about 600 grams of thrust for each of the motors. The motor specs that I'm looking at here there's these 282212 motors that have 1800 kV throw out at about 180 watts and a th thrust of about 640 grams. That's more than enough so four of these guys will definitely give us the two and a half um, kilograms of thrust that we need. Maximum current is only 16.6 .6 amps so we can use the 20 amp ESCs as well. Now obviously I'm talking about a quad here if we're talking about a hexcopter where it's got six motors then you divide the two and a half kilograms lift that you need for this kilogram model by six rather than four so rather than trying to find a motor that would give us 600 grams of thrust it would be looking for one that gave us 400 so we'd be able to use smaller motors on smaller props. Let's look at a real world example of how a model flies that weighs just a bit less than a kilogram but has four of these motors on it. The question is how does that fly? The answer like this. So you can see with that kind of power it gives you lots and lots of headroom to do some very aggressive maneuvers and 3D. It also means that you're hovering at about half stick which is exactly what you need. Other things to think about though are when you're looking at the motor on a website and trying to find how much thrust it gives you, if it isn't listed, contact the manufacturer. It appears as a rule of thumb that the wattage and the thrust, depending on the combination of the prop and other bits and pieces, is about three times. So if it's 180 watts, it's probably about three times that in terms of grams of thrust. But always use the prop that's recommended for that motor for the size of battery that you're using. You usually find that motors are, um, are spec'd for a certain range from 2S to 3S to 4S and in each of those 
any decent motor manufacturer will list the prop that should be used along with those motor sizes. Always use that prop because that prop will give you the thrust that you're looking for and won't stress the motor and everything will last a little bit longer. I have considered running 4S on a couple of my models. All my models run 3S at the moment. That's because a lot of the um, electronics and other bits and pieces want 3S inputs. So I don't have two batteries on, on the thing to run it. 4S will obviously give you a little bit more oomph because it'll turn the prop faster but you'll probably find that the recommendation is that you reduce the size of the prop because although it's spinning faster you uh, you want it uh, to be slightly smaller. The other thing that I've figured out doing this um, and thanks to Lucian Miller for helping me figure this out on, on email was that larger props swinging at a lower RPM are much more efficient than smaller props swinging quickly. So I used to think that the faster the, the, the motor was turning, the higher the KV, the more power the prop was giving out. That's not the case. So with my big quad, with the D3536 motors on it, that's only running at 9, 10 KV, but it has 11 inch props with a 4.5 inch pitch, that those motors look like that wimps because it's only on 910 kV. All right, it's got a slightly bigger prop, but if you compare that with the smaller motors running at 1800 kV, it's a seven inch prop, you know. Uh, the s bigger prop with a bigger motor will produce um, over twice the lift of the smaller one. So don't get hung up on some of the numbers. Look at the thrust that's available and go with the specs. Finally, if you want to lift something with your quad, add this weight to the calculations. If you're expecting to um, put camera gear and other bits and pieces on it, weigh all that stuff out, add it into the calculation before you double it, add your 20%, and then divide the, um, that amount of thrust by the number of motors. Build that in from the start, and then you'll never be stressing your, your system, and you won't have an ESC or a motor or something let go with all of your expensive cameras hanging from underneath. So in conclusion, the process is very straightforward. Figure out the weight of the model and add 20%. That's to give you that little bit of headroom for those inefficiencies in performance of the motor and the rotor itself. Divide that thrust by the number of motors that you need on the model and then look for a motor that gives you that amount of thrust. Once you've got that, make sure that you're sizing the ESC to give you 20% of headroom. So if the maximum um, headroom is around uh, you know the maximum ampage on the motor is 20 amps don't put a 20 amp speed controller on put a 25 or a 30 and that kind of goes on to my next point really if in doubt go one size bigger if you're looking at two motors or two ESC's and you're umming and ahhing between the two go for the bigger one it'll last longer it'll give you better performance and more headroom and the last thing is there's an excellent um, calculator that you can plug your numbers into and it will actually tell you the current at hover, how long your battery will last, all the other bits and pieces. So if you know the weight, if you know the motors that you're going to be using, if you know the capacity and type of battery that you're going to be using, if you know how many motors are going to be on the model, you can plug all this into this calculator and get the answers. So hopefully that's useful for people out there. Any questions or comments please post and um, thanks for watching and subscribe.